Hi everyone, Professor Sweeting asked me to give you a quick overview of Franz Kafka. Now my name is Joseph Patrick Pascal. I also teach English here and I am the Writing Center Coordinator. And I happen to write my master's thesis on Franz Kafka, so I do know a little something about him. Kafka was one of the most famous novelists of the 20th century, which is pretty impressive considering he never finished any of the three novels that he wrote. You'll often see his novel, The Trial, on lists of the top 10 novels of the 20th century. It is a story about a man named Joseph K. who wakes up one morning to find himself under arrest, but he can never figure out what exactly he's being arrested for. Kafka is also famous for having left a note to his friend Max Brod asking that everything he wrote be burned on red. Max Brod, of course, did not burn any of it, but he published it all after his friend's death. He said that Kafka knew Brod was his biggest fan and he would never burn all of that work. So it's because of Max Brod that Kafka is famous. While he did have some success, for instance, The Metamorphosis was published, it won a nice literary prize. Uh, none of his novels were published. A lot of his works were not published, and Max Brod published and promoted Kafka. He was writing at the turn of the 20th century, which meant that he was dealing with a lot of new problems that we would consider part of modern life, and you would classify him under modernism and the broader term of uh, literary movements. You might have heard people use the word Kafkaesque, to describe certain nightmare bureaucratic situations, and that's a term that uh, comes from his work. His later work especially deals with these giant faceless bureaucracies. People kind of get shuffled around through endless paperwork and red tape. So if you hear the term Kafkaesque, it refers to that. So Kafka lived in Prague. He was born there, spent most of his life there. Uh, it was at the time part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, but today it is the Czech Republic. Kafka trained to be a lawyer, and he spent most of his life working in a desk job at the Workers Accident Insurance Company. He would work a shorter shift that let him out in the afternoon. He would take a nap, and then he would spend all night writing. He required absolute silence when he was writing. That was part of his muse. Even the smallest sound uh, would disturb him. Some of his, his short stories, like Josephine the Singer or The Mouse People, was based on the little skitterings of mice that he would hear while he was sitting alone in his room writing. Kafka also had a terrible relationship with his father. In some of his earlier stories, like The Metamorphosis, you see a literal father character who can be kind of terrorizing one of the other characters, which mirrors Kafka's own life. But in his later writing, he kind of expanded that to a bigger picture where instead of a specific father figure, it was like the, an oppressive force, like a government force or something, had taken on that role of the father figure domineering everything. Kafka wrote a 100-page long letter to his father. Uh, you could pick it up and read it. It's one of the things Max Brod published. Uh, and Kafka gave it to his mom to give to his dad. And his mom kept it aside and said, you know what, I'm not going to give this to your father. It is going to cause more harm than good in your relationship. And one of the scenes he writes about in that, as being a, one of the crucial scenes when he was a child, is that he was in bed crying. I think he was crying for a glass of water. And his father just came in, picked him up, and put him outside on the balcony. And he had to just sit outside in the cold for a long time. And he just got stuck with this idea in his head that at any time this massive force that you have no control over could just totally move you and ignore your wishes, anything like that. Uh, so we see father figures like that in his writing. We see entire government regimes like that in his writing. Kafka also, he had multiple long engagements. Uh, he could never get married. And something about becoming a father himself was like a, he had a, a certain stigma against it. He did live with his parents almost his entire life, though, except for a short stint where he moved to Berlin with one of his fiancés. It's also important to note that Kafka was Jewish. He was part of a minority in his culture, and he wrote in German. So even though most people would have spoken Czech in Prague, uh, he could not even speak and write Czech that well. 
So all of the writing we're reading, they're translations from German. He died young at age 40 of tuberculosis. So he died before World War II broke out. But it is important to note that his sisters were killed in concentration camps by the Nazis. And people say that his writing is predictive of the Nazis, of the totalitarian regimes that would overtake the world. And you can see some of that happening in his writing, even if you look at the Metamorphosis. Uh, that word that is translated as vermin in English to say that he transformed into a monstrous vermin, uh, that's a word that was sometimes used as a derogatory word to describe Jewish people. So there is that element at play with these marginalized characters we see in his work. Uh, but something interesting about Kafka's work is how they are very vague, yet extremely specific at the same time. He manages to give these vivid descriptions, but there's a lot in the work that is left mysterious, and I think that is one of the reasons uh, he's become such an important author, because people like to try to analyze these stories, provide some kind of interpretation for what's happening in them. And like the best literature, there's no one interpretation that will really be the key to the story. You can approach it from a lot of different angles, and a lot of different explanations seem equally valid. So uh, you see all kind of crazy things happening in his writing. Some people say, you know, they're surreal or dreamlike. Some people say they're absurd. There's these vivid images, but no real explanation given for them. And it's up to us as the readers to try to piece these things together. So something I want you to keep in mind, and I know uh, it's said that Americans in particular have a tough time with us because of our sense of humor, is that Kafka's work is supposed to be funny. I believe it's supposed to be funny and sad at the same time, simultaneously. Uh, for instance, I mentioned his novel, The Trial, before. The first chapter of The Trial involves uh, Joseph K. wakes up in his bed. There's these strange men there eating his breakfast. They tell him he's under arrest. And Kafka's friends all say that Kafka would read this chapter out loud to them, and he would be bursting out in laughter. He couldn't contain his laughter at this situation Joseph K. found himself in. So I want you to think about that fact that his writing is supposed to be funny, uh, even in The Metamorphosis, I think you can see that. The Metamorphosis is something of a tragedy. I think it has a relatively dark ending. But think about the beginning of it. Gregor Semsa finding himself as some kind of insect. And his reaction to it is, is ridiculous. He's trying to get dressed. Imagine this bug flailing around with his legs, trying to put pants on, trying to go out and see this senior clerk that's at the door from his job. And his parents are shouting at him. All these kind of things. Uh, you could see that scene as being funny, even though at the same time it is sad and horrific that he's now literally become an insect. And I mean, think about how much you can read these stories like a metaphor for something. And again, I think it's up to us to think about that. But think about the way Gregor Samsa had spent his life as a traveling salesman, and he is just focus only on providing money to his family, and he's not really living his full, authentic human experience, and that kind of uh, vermin inside that's taken over him, that he's only concerned with his job and money, became a physical manifestation in this insect form. I mean, that's one interpretation, and you could take it a lot of different ways. So think about you know how you would apply your interpretation to these stories. So I hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit about Franz Kafka from me, and I wish you good luck working on your interpretations of Kafka. Hope you enjoyed reading The Metamorphosis, and thanks very much.